So looking inside this X9 combine, for those of you that don't know, it's a twin rotor. So we've got rotor on the right, rotor on the left. That's gonna lead to increased capacity out of this machine for threshing and for separation with that twin rotor system. So that means we're gonna have different style concaves. It's, it's not gonna fit up quite like an S series. However, the options are gonna be similar. So typically in our area, we're gonna see primarily round bar or the Condex like we see here, the Condex max round setup. Um, so if you're running aftermarket, if you're running deer concaves, if you're running Condex, whatever the case, just remember, this is essentially a non-adjustable sieve. Um, so the, the two factors that make a concave important are how aggressive is it for the threshing and how much space is there to let thresh grain through. So round bar is, is preferred by a lot of growers just because it's really, really gentle on the threshing aspect of that. And it's got plenty of space to let loose grain fall through, especially in corn. Uh, some guys do prefer maybe just a, a step above that in aggressiveness. And that's where our Condex max round system comes in. And you see that very front section is replaced with a, something a little bit more aggressive to get those ears turned and oriented and rolling through that concave quicker. That can lead to better threshing and quicker threshing so that loose grain has more time to fall out the concave or the separator grates later. Adjustment on this concave is different than S-Series. It's done on its own. It's a hydraulic active concave system. So as far as keeping itself balanced front to back and level and setting that zero point, it's gonna do all that on its own. So uh, very self-sustaining and very uh, low input from you as an operator to keep that concave exactly where it needs to be at all times. When you're setting this, similar logic to an S series in the sense that your concave gap and your rotor speed are gonna determine your threshing and your separating performance. So for your coarse grains, that gap is gonna be much wider in corn because you wanna let that ear, the threshed cob, to roll all the way through without getting broken up. In soybeans, we may run a, want to run tighter, but some of that depends on where we're at in the season, how dry the soybeans are, and how tough those, or not tough, those pods are to thresh out. Um, so concave gap is gonna play a role in that. And then rotor speed is after that. Rotor speed is gonna determine how many times we're hitting that cob or hitting that pod. And it's also gonna determine how much force we have to separate. So. Concave is the first thing I look at when we're threshing. Rotor speed is going to play into more uh, both threshing and separating when we're setting this machine. Now, whether you're looking at concave gap or rotor speed, just remember the minimum effective dose is going to be your best bet uh, in any crop or any condition. And what I mean by that is we just want to be tight enough and we just want to be fast enough to do a good job threshing. If we're doing more than that, if we're going over speed for any reason, we could cause grain damage. We could also beat up the straw and other material going through this separator system and turn that into smaller particles which fall through and load the cleaning shoe more. So to be as efficient as we can with our horsepower to get the most capacity, we just wanna do barely enough to do a good job threshing and let the rest of the large material flow out the back of the machine. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the specific numbers are going to be particular to your field and your crops and conditions, but just keep that in mind when you're setting it. Do just enough with that concave gap and just enough with that rotor speed to do the job of threshing and do the job of separating. Active concave isolation has been an option on S-Series combines for a number of years now. However, on our X-Series combines, it's standard equipment. For those of you that aren't familiar with active concave isolation, what it does is it's basically these cylinders that you see right here. And with the large headers that we're using now and the larger amount of horsepower that we're running through these machines, if you were to get a wad or a slug to come through the machine, what the active concave isolation does is it more or less works as a shock absorber. So as that material comes through the machine, it allows the, the concaves to spread apart a little bit, allowing that slug to roll through there without plugging and slugging the rotors.